tonight using Trump's playbook against him. Donald Trump is about to speak at a campaign event for Pennsylvania Senate candidate Dr. Mehmet Oz. Republican primary is growing ugly. Trump's former Secretary of State is questioning Oz's loyalty to America after ABC News reported that Oz, who is a dual U.S.-Turkish citizen, voted in Turkey's 2018 election. We need to get uh, him and his team to explain why he had time and energy and focus to vote in a Turkish election, but not in an American election. Out front now, Van Jones, former special advisor to President Obama, and Scott Jennings, former senior advisor to Senate Minority Leader McConnell and former special assistant to President George W. Bush. So, Scott, you know, one of Trump's tactics, we all remember, right, paint a political opponent as different and possibly un-American, right? He did it all the time. Now we're seeing that very same tactic being used by a former Trump insider against Trump's preferred candidate, Dr. Oz. I mean, that's a lot. Scott, is Pompeo turning on Trump here? Well, I think there are 20, 24 implications here, Aaron. Frankly, you've got Pompeo, who wants to run for president, obviously, lining up against his former boss. And candidly, if you're the McCormick campaign and you want to go down this line of attack, what better surrogate could you have to deliver an attack like this, whether you think it's fair or valid, than a former United States Secretary of State? And so Pompeo dipping into one of the biggest Senate races in the country, in my opinion, has 2024 implications written all over it. He'd love to best Trump in this race and say, hey, look at me, my endorsement matters. And Van, in this, you see karma. Yeah, I mean, this is, um, you know, unfortunately, uh, this is the chickens coming home to roost for Donald Trump. Donald Trump was you know, famously uh, attacking people as not American, said some uh, uh, U.S. Congresswomen should go back where they came from, even though they were yep. U.S. citizens, et cetera. He created this whole sort of uh, style of politics. Now it's being used against him. Uh, my only uh, sadness about it is that the only way you can attack uh, Trump and his crew is from even further right <laughs> with the same kind of Trump tactics. It tells you something about where the Republican Party is, is, is going now. It's unfortunate. I mean, I mean, I guess, right, using the same thing. Um, it, it, obviously, this race is getting incredibly nasty, as you point out, Scott. So but then I want to ask you about Mark Esper. So the New York Times reports that the former defense secretary, Mark Esper, has a new book. We know he has a new book, but they say they've read it in it. They say Trump asked Esper in 2020 about launching missiles into Mexico to destroy the drug labs, that was a quote, and kill cartel members, arguing that, quote, no one would know it was us. Okay, Scott, um, you know, we, we, we've seen what a country does when they just go throw missiles into another country, right? Mexico is a sovereign country. Is this revelation, though, going to tarnish Trump's, Trump's image among his loyalists, uh, loyalists or the opposite? No, the opposite. I mean, look, I sit out here in Kentucky, as you know, and yep. states like this have been ravaged by illegal fentanyl coming <clears> over <throat> the border. I mean, let's be honest. If Joe Biden had proposed this, we'd be having a panel right now, you know, celebrating his bold leadership. The only reason people are crazy about this is because Trump proposed it. We've been using the U.S. military to fight the overseas drug war for years. I did a little research before the show. I saw an article in USA Today. U.S. military expands drug war in Latin America. You know when it came? February 2013, when Obama and Biden were in before. We use the military to fight the drug war. Mm. People in middle America are dying from this illegal fentanyl. I don't see what the big deal is. And you ask me specifically, do Trump's people like this? Heck yeah. And they wish he'd already done it. So, so Van, okay, that there's a view on, on on Trump's base, but what about for Democrats? You have you have yet another person who worked for Trump waiting until long after they left to write a book, and in this book, putting all this stuff that is intended to show, I thought the guy was crazy and awful, and I'm now telling you that. Does it do do well, anything for anybody doing it now, Van? Well, it maybe boosts his uh, book sales. Uh, it's not exactly a profile encouraged to do it this late. Um, and I do think that, you know, it's unfortunate because uh, nobody is going to come out and say, hey, uh, I, I'm, uh, I misquoted. Donald Trump would never said that. He would never say anything like that because he used to say crazy stuff like that all the time, every day in the White House and on Twitter. I think people have forgotten how nuts things got. Uh, look, I, I don't agree that if Biden said he was going to start bombing uh, Mexico, that people would uh, celebrate that. I mean, you, you may, your party might. I don't think people in our party would. Uh, I think this is a, a reminder to the American people of how crazy things got 
for four years and how crazy they could get again. That's what I think it is. Scott, you know, okay, here's the thing, though, in terms of, you know, some people, this whole, like, you know, how do you take Trump? And that they, they maybe people would like that he, he spoke that way, but nobody actually thinks he would do those sorts of things. I remember a conversation with Trump 12 years ago when he told me he wanted to bomb all the oil fields in Saudi Arabia. Uh, that was before he was president. Now, you know, we, we hear this from the Defense Secretary Esper. Does anybody remember two months ago when the war started and Trump briefly kind of took on Putin, who today he called a genius again, uh, and said, well, let's just fly over and bomb the hell out of, out of Putin and put Chinese writing on the side of our planes and no one will know it was us. <laughs> I mean, Scott, it's the same thing. Does he, does he just not mean any of it seriously? I mean, I, I never know which part he means seriously and which part, you know, he's just throwing in as an aside. But I'm going to tell you something right now. This drug war is serious business. The drug deaths are serious business. The idea that he was trying to think of something out of the box, people would have responded to that. I know some folks think it sounds crazy, but people would have responded to that. And I'm not even sure why he would throw in, they'll never know it was us. Because I would think if I, look, American presidents have been sending our military to other countries to fight the drug war since the Reagan years. I mean, this is this not is fair. necessarily a new idea. It's a little more dramatic, but we do. We do this all the time. I we're now, we're now praising Iran Contra. I mean, this, this is how, this, look, this is really, really bad stuff. No, nobody's more anti-drug than me. Nobody's gone to more funerals over drug stuff than I have. Uh, but there's a way to do it. And I don't think bombing countries and lying about it is actually going to make things better.